What is up guys, welcome back for our week 6 battle for the GPC. As you can tell, this is coming out a bit late, and I'll explain at the end of the video why. Uh, it has to do a lot with um, how I'm playing Pokemon right now, and uh, my motivation to record as well kind of hasn't been there uh, in, the fa <laughs> in the past few days, so... I'll, I'll go more into detail a little bit later, but uh, let's uh, let's hop into it. This week we are taking on Ethan, Redithan, and the Tennessee Dynamos. We took him on last season. We crit him with our Doug Trio for the win over Terrakion. Uh, onto the Terrakion, excuse me. That crit from Doug Trio, the Earthquake. But this uh, this season, he's got a little bit more of a scary team than he did last season, I would say. I say that about every team, but uh, Ethan's particularly against mine uh, has a pretty good matchup, realistically. He has Celesteela. Mega Charizard X, Shaman, Weavile, Dugtrio, Miltank, Chimeco, Tapu Fini, Raichu, and I can't remember the last one because as I'm looking at this, uh, oh, Hitmonchan, yes, that's right, sorry, because he's already made transactions uh, for week six or after week six while I'm looking at his team sheet. But, uh, and he's already got those transactions. He'll go into the detail with those a little bit later, but um, yeah, he's got those mons. You can see them on the right side of your screen. The Raichu, I didn't expect to come initially, but after having mocked with um, with Johnny, it turns out that that thing's a little bit more of a threat to my team than I had first envisioned, because it gets HP Ice, Thunderbolt, and Focus Blast. And as you can see, the team that I'm bringing does not deal with that very well, so uh, gonna have to find a way around that. But uh, let's start things off with Megalopony Luna. This week we are bringing a Jolly set because I want to outspeed his Doug Trio. Uh, after rocks, I don't in, uh, expect his Weavile to be absolute max speed. It makes no sense against my team. Uh, there's nothing that he would be outspeeding technically, so uh, I want to make sure that I'm able to uh, to outspeed just the Duck Trio, uh, just so that I have a little bit more bulk, so I can take a Moon Blast after two rock switch-ins from an uninvested Tapu Fini. That's kind of what the HP is there for. Now the set we're running is Return, Low Kick, Power Up Punch, and Retaliate. I don't want to run High Jump Kick on this set because I feel like Celesteela has a chance to run uh, Protect. Leech Seed Protect is a very common set. He can run Protect on anything he wants, and if I'm going for a high jump kick, I'm going to take a huge amount of crash damage, and that is no bueno in the words of Old Man Tup. Uh, but I have Power Up Punch on here for his switch-ins. I have Retaliate on here because I expect him to pick up a kill once in a while, and every time he does, Megalopony comes in and fires off a Retaliate and puts pretty much anything in range of a return. Uh, realistically, the only thing that would not be in range uh, would be a full health Shaman without rocks up, and a, uh, like a 90% Tapu Fini with rocks up uh, if it's fully defensive. So those are the two things that I could see switching in. Uh, but even at that, they don't really want to take the hit. And I have decent switch-ins to both of them realistically. So uh, that's actually the next Pokemon on our list, which is Jirachi, lucky and bad. We have Shed Shell for the Dug Trio so that I don't get trapped. Thunderbolt is there specifically for Celesteela and uh, Tapu Fini. This is my check to Tapu Fini because it can't really do much to me uh, outside of Nature's Madness, which I can just wish Protect off. Uh, I can hit it with repeated Thunderbolts and, and knock it down low, putting it in range of something that you'll see a little bit later. Um, but Thunderbolt is also there to make sure that Celesteela uh, can't necessarily 1v1 me. It can to some extent if it's, um, I believe it gets Swords Dance. But uh, otherwise, Earthquake and Flamethrower with this spread with the 100 uh, EVs, in defense, uh, bold nature, 220 in spadef. The 12 in speed is to make sure that I outspeed like an uninvested shaman. And uh, the 176 in HP is just to, to round out the bulk. With this spread, I don't get too hit KO'd by max attack, uh, non adamant earthquake from Celesteela after rocks. And I also don't get too hit KO'd by flamethrower from it. So I can take both relatively well. I expect him to run earthquake and not flamethrower though, which is why I decided to go with a little bit more bulk in the defensive stat. Actually, it comes out to more in the special defense stat, but uh, they're about even, realistically. Then U-Turn is there for momentum, and then Wish Protect is to heal up the team. My main Wish Protect target is going to be this Mon, because it has a lot of survivability. Um, against this team, it puts in a lot of work. Aerodactyl, Chris Pratt, coming this week with uh, the Rockhead ability uh, for absolutely no reason. I don't know why I wasn't running pressure or on Nerve, uh, to, to be real with you guys, but anyway. Uh, we've got a Yachi Abarion here because I expect to, well, I do outspeed the Weavile unless it's Scarfed uh, with this spread. I hit 385, it hits 383, and uh, if it hits me with an Ice Shard, I'll be able to take it no problem even after rocks, thanks to the Yachi Berry, fire back a Stone Edge, and knock that thing out, uh, barring a Charty Berry, but I think I even knock it out through that. I'm not 100% sure, but I am max attack, as you can see, 216 speed and 40 HP. Uh, Aerial Ace is really only there for the Shaman because I want to wear it down. Realistically, I probably shouldn't have run Aerial Ace and probably should have run Roost instead. Probably, it would it might have done me some good, but um, Taunt is also there. Now, this is my strategy, guys. I'm going to get up Stealth Rocks, 
and his only form of hazard removal is either the Hitmonchan or the uh, the Tapu Fini. His Hitmonchan, I can hit with an Aerial Ace if it wants to spin on me, and his Tapu Fini, I can taunt uh, before it can go for a um, for a Defog. So I can make sure that the hazards stay up, and then I want to get Fini to about 80% before it switches out, and you guys are going to see why uh, a little bit later. But this is the Aerodactyl set that I decided to bring. It's really just here to keep up hazards. The next one I have is the other Gen 1 Fossil, which its nickname doesn't come out fully uh, on uh, the actual battle itself, as you guys will see. But this is my uh, answer to Zard X. Uh, even if he's a will o -Wisp variant, I expect him to bring will o -Wisp because um, it deals with my Ditto very well. Uh, he can just switch out into his Tapu Fini if he's uh, Mono Dragon attacking, which he has brought before in the past uh, when facing a Ditto. He brought a Haxorus with only a Dragon move so that an opposing Ditto could not beat his Jirachi. Uh, so that was really smart on his part, and I expect him to do that again. Knowing that, I can just sit in on his uh, Zardex and just set up Swords Dances. And the second he touches me with an attack, my speed goes up. Uh, which makes me a huge th a, a huge threat to the remainder of st his team. This is uh, a potential sweeper, but it's not really here for sweeping. Uh, it's more so here for Rapid Spin. I don't want to get rid of my uh, my own hazards with the fog from Aerodactyl. So I want to make sure those stay up, specifically for the Zardex. Make sure that I get a little bit of chip damage off on the Celesteela, and more importantly, the Weavile. And uh, Stone Edge is there so that I can hit. I hit his entire team uh, neutrally with, st uh, with Stone Edge. He does not have a rock resist outside of Dugtrio, which doesn't take an Aqua Jet, so uh, especially after a Stone Edge from a 224 attack, Kabutov. So I can just sit in on his Zard, uh, set up Swords Dances, and eventually he'll be forced to switch out. That's the idea. And uh, if he switches out into something like Raichu, for example, I can Jet it, and then on the following turn, if it went for Thunderbolt to knock me out, uh, for example, if it's Choice, I can go into my Zygarde, which is the next one that I'll show you guys, and uh, then I can start setting up. So, this is the idea behind the Kabutops, it's really just here to check the Zardex, I didn't want to bring Ditto because he has the Tapu Fini as a switch into any Mono, mono Dragon attacking Zardex, so I don't want to do that. Next up, we have Drizzy, the Zygarde. Now, this is a very interesting set, as you can see, I'm weakness policy. Uh, I'm only running 32 speed, because I wanted to outspeed a max speed Raichu uh, after uh, Dragon Dance. Realistically, I probably should have run more speed on this, but I needed a little bit of extra bulk because I wanted to be able to take his HP Ice from a uh, max special attack shaman, uh, as well as be able to take a uh, an, an ice shard potentially from Weavile and a Moonblast or an Ice Beam from his Tapu Fini. That is the idea: is to take an, a super effective attack, get my weakness policy off, and then uh, Dragon Dance on the same turn. If his shaman switches in on my Dragon Dance, I get to go for Sludge Wave. He hits me with a super effective attack, being either Dazzling Gleam or Hidden Power Ice, and then I hit him with a second Sludge Wave, and he drops. That is uh, even a max HP variant. He has to be running some sort of Spadef, which I don't expect if he's checking Zygarde. So, uh, that is uh, the idea behind this. This Zygarde is to be able to take a super effective attack, and then just start uh, setting up and beating his entire team, because if I get Finny at about 86% before ro it comes back in on rocks, plus 3,000 arrows will knock it out. Uh, a plus two uh, sludge wave, like I said, after a first one will knock out the Shaman. Thousand Arrows is going to knock out Celesteela if it comes in at about 80. Uh, even if it's rocking max HP, if I'm at plus three, it's going to go down. Zardex drops. Uh, Weavile drops to plus three E speed after rocks. Uh, Dugtrio also drops to plus three E speed after rocks. His Mil Tank can potentially take it, but that's realistically all. Like everything else is just going to die. Um, even him on Chan is going to die. He has a lot of really decent priority on his team, like Sucker Punch on Dugtrio. Uh, Ice Shard on Weavile, he's got the um, the Hitmonchan with Mach Punch, but I'm not too worried because I out-prioritize all of that with E-Speed, so uh, that's the idea behind E-Speed this week. I think it's the first time I'm actually running it, so that's kind of funny. But uh, our last Mon is the most interesting Mon on the team. Um, realistically, I should have probably thought this through a little bit better, but uh, this set could have put in a lot of work against Ethan. Um, it's got Leftovers, uh, Thunder Punch, Sky Drop, Bulk Up, and Substitute. Uh, and you see this spread is mostly defensive. It's got 120 in HP, 128 in defense, 12 in attack, and then 248 in speed. The 248 in speed is to make sure that I outspeed max speed Zard, even though I keep probably wouldn't bring that. Uh, and the bulk up, the reason I'm bringing this Thunder is specifically, guys, is because I don't want to be so easily revenged by Weavile or Dugtrio that they can just come in after I get a kill and then just hit me with either an Ice Shard. Weavile can even pursue me if it predicts a switch out. Uh, Dugtrio can hit me with a Stone Edge. So I don't want to be that revengeable. 
by any one of those mons. Even though I have a decent switch into his Weavile in Kabutops, because if it hits me with a physical attack, I go up to plus two speed and I outspeed it on the following turn and hit it with a, with a Stone Edge. Excuse me. So I could do that. Uh, but, oh, whoops. Hold on. Undo delete. There we go. Um, <laughs> but the real reason that I wanted to bring this was because of his mill tank. Now, I expected his mill tank to be his switch into my Thunderous every time, and neglecting the fact that Raichu gets Lightning Rod, um, or I think it's uh, Volt Absorb, I, I don't know which one it is, but it gets one of those uh, electric uh, absorbing moves, uh, moves, no, abilities, sorry, it's late, uh, I'm, I'm late, it's tired, there you go, uh, but this set is basically to force a switch on top of Finny, or on Celesteela, and have him go out into Mill Tank as I set up a sub. After I go for a bulk up, Ice Punch doesn't break my sub. And if he brings Mill Tank, it's going to have Ice Punch on it because I have an Aerodactyl and I have a uh, Zygarde. So it's going to have Ice Punch on it. And an uninvested Ice Punch does not break my sub after a bulk up. So I can sit there and just set up bulk ups repeatedly and then just get all of my health back and start sky dropping and thunder punching everything. That is the idea behind this set. And again, I'm not so easily revenged by Weavile or by Dugtrio because once I have plus three plus three uh, and if I'm behind a sub his Weavile has to hit me with an attack but if I'm behind a sub it's not going to do anything and I'm going to knock it out with a Thunder Punch or a Sky Drop same thing with Dugtrio so uh, that's the idea behind the set let's see if it works we're going to jump right into the battle guys I'm going to commentate over it show you guys what happened and we will be right back all right guys so here we are and as you can see Ethan did not bring the mill tank you know, I should have probably thought through my prep uh, before the game because I realized that th another reason that we're having this battle, uh, this recording, kind of late is because we had the battle also kind of late. Uh, Ethan kind of stalled me out a little bit. Uh, we, we waited until Friday to have the game, uh, and the battle was supposed to go up on Saturday, and I just couldn't be asked to uh, to record, honestly. But uh, as you can see, he's got the Shaman. I expected the Shaman. Uh, the Tapu Finny was kind of a, an, an iffy bring because Johnny didn't bring it because he knew that... Uh, that Jirachi would, would just be able to wallet for days. Uh, Celesteela, I expected. The Weavile, I expected. The Zardex, I expected. Uh, but the Raichu was kind of, again, on the fence about that one. I wasn't sure why it was here until later in the game when Ethan actually explained it to me. And I kind of saw what it was doing to me. But you're going to see right here. So we're going to open up. I'm going to lead off with my best possible lead, which is Aerodactyl. And I'm going to go straight for the Stealth Rocks. I just want to get them up. And I'm not even going to hesitate. They're going to go up. He's going to go for the Nature's Madness, revealing to me that he probably doesn't have a water move, as I expected. I didn't say this in the Team Builder, but I didn't expect this type of Finny to have a, a water move because it made no sense. So I'm going to I'm gonna taunt it right here. And I'm going to go out into, out into my Jirachi as he goes for a Nature's Madness, which is fine. Uh, now I'm going to go for a Wish as he switches out into his Shaman, uh, knowing that I am uh, more than likely a physical attacker and he doesn't want to take a Thunder Punch with his top of Finny. So I'm going to uh, U-turn out. I see that he's Rocky Helmet. Now, that Rocky Helmet damage is actually going to be quite important. Uh, right here, his Shaman's going to go for a Leech Seed, as my uh, Aerodactyl is going to go back up to near full, uh, and the Leech Seed is going to gain him back a little bit of health. I'm now going to switch out into my Jirachi, and I'm going to go for a Wish on his Seed Flare, which does not knock me out. Now, I probably should have scouted here, because I did expect him to pack Earth Power specifically for Jirachi, and it ends up taking me out, even though he's not an offensive set, which is kind of unfortunate. I'm now going to go out into Aerodactyl, and I'm just going to fire off a Stone Edge, uh, I believe, expecting a switch. I could also go for Aerial Ace, I'm not sure. Uh, I do go for Aerial Ace, okay, so, yeah. Uh, I'm going to get this thing pretty low. It's about in the range that I want it to be, so I'm just going to taunt right here. Uh, he's going to go for a Nature's Madness, I believe, uh, or just a Moon Blast. Yes, that's right, that does 40% to me. So, I could have actually 1v1 this thing if I had Roost instead of Aerial Ace, uh, and I could have just sat in here and Roosted forever. He's actually going to go out into Celesteela here as I go for a Stone Edge, and I'm going to hit this thing really hard with a crit. Now, uh, that crit, yes, while it matters a little bit, uh, it would have done 44, and he would have been at 44. So it would have been a roll to kill on the next one. But now I have a pretty much guaranteed kill right here. And I actually get another crit in the following Stone Edge. It is a high crit a critical ratio move. Uh, I can't really be uh, mad at myself or mad at anything for getting that. I mean, again, it was a possible to hit KO anyway. Uh, he's going to go for Moonblast. I'm not going to let him uh, defog away my rocks. I'm going to keep them there. And then I'm going to just go for another Stone Edge. Now this Tapu Fini is actually relatively low, which is really nice. He's going to go for a Moonblast. He's going to knock me out. And here's where I can go into my Megalopony and actually scare him out. Like, I don't I don't know if he's actually going to be terrified of this, but he's he is going to switch out. He's going to go into Shaman, which is Rocky Helmet, as we've seen earlier. And I'm going to go for a Retaliate right here. 
and it is going to do a ton. Now that the Celesteel is gone, he doesn't have normal switch in. So I'm going to go for a Retaliate. Uh, I'm going to hit into his Rocky Helmet, and I'm going to go for a Return to knock this thing out, because I know the Power-Up Punch is not going to do it. Now he's going to go out into his Zard, ladies and gentlemen. This Zard is a 50%. Zard X typically dies to return from this range. Why do I stay in? Um, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I probably wasn't thinking straight, <laughs> because I actually expected a Will-O-Wisp. And I didn't want my Kabutops getting burned for no reason, because if it got burned, uh, and he, um, and he switched out into his Finny on the following turn, I was screwed, because he got off a Defog, no matter what. There was nothing I could do to stop it, so that was kind of my thought process on that, and I didn't want anything else getting burned, because my entire team is physical attackers at this point. Uh, it, was, it was always physical attackers. The only special attack I had on the team uh, was Thunderbolt from Jirachi and Sludge Wave from... Uh, Zygarde, so probably not the best idea on my part, considering he was going to run so much physical bulk uh, between Shaman, Tapu Fini, Celesteela, and apparently this Zard X. Because as you guys are going to see here, uh, I make a really dumb misplay, and I go for a uh, return right here, as he's going to go for a Roost. So he's going to put himself out of range of two returns if he burns me. Now, what I should have done on that first turn was actually gone for a power-up punch because I would have been able to hit this thing extremely hard with a return on the following turn, forced him to attack me. Yes, he would have taken a knockout on my Lopany, uh, but he would have been extremely low at this point. Uh, he would have taken a lot more damage. As you see, that return did 34%, uh, and he um, he would have been at about 40, 48-ish. So, I'm actually just going to go for the Power Punch on this turn, again, staying in when I know he's going to Will-O-Wisp me, uh, as he does, and uh, I'm going to go for a, another Power Up Punch, I believe, on this turn to get myself back up to neutral, and uh, he's going to go for another Roost, and now he knows that he has to attack me because he can't just let me sit here uh, and keep going for Power Up Punch, so I'm going to go for a return on this turn, and as you'll see, he drops to about 53%, so he would have been a little bit lower, it wouldn't have made a huge difference, but in the long run, I think it would have still been my better play. Now I'm going to go out into my re response being Kabutops. Now, he knows that this thing gets weak armor. He sees my balloon. He knows that this is my check to Zardex. But, <laughs> it turns out that Ethan brought a very gimmicky set in the back. And it happens to be his Raichu. And he's going to switch directly into it right here, as you're going to see. So, had I gone for a Stone Edge on this turn, this Raichu would have been in range of Aqua Jet on the following turn. But now I'm just going to go for an Aqua Jet. It's going to do 60%. So as you can see, Stone Edge into Aqua Jet would have killed. Uh, but he's going to Encore me into Aqua Jet. Now, I go for another Aqua Jet on this turn. I actually expected him to switch out into Finny. And the reason that I went for another Aqua Jet was because if he switched out into Finny, first turn of Encore is done. I go for another Aqua Jet. I actually don't knock him out after the, the next one. And then on the third one, my Encore ends. And look at the rest of his team. He's got a Weavile that cannot break me with one move. He's got a Zard that also cannot break me with any one move. It can burn me, but that's all it can do. And he's got a Raichu, which would have been at 30%. So I wanted to capitalize on his Finny switch, but unfortunately he stays in. So now you're going to see, he's going to go into his Tapu Finny, and I can't knock this thing out. I'm blocked into uh, Aqua Jet right now, and he's going to be able to hit me up with a couple of Moon Blasts. So I'm going to go for Jet. He's going to hit me with a Moon Blast. It's going to do a lot of damage because this thing has like no special bulk whatsoever. And, uh, he's gonna pop my balloon. I didn't expect it to do this much, so I was, was kind of surprised. What I should have done on this turn, even though I kind, I kind of expected him to go for, like, maybe a Defog on the following turn, uh, getting rid of the rocks before I had a chance to go into anything else, and making sure that this, uh, this Tapu Fini stayed alive, uh, but not a good play. As you're gonna see, uh, I'm gonna go for another Jet, as he's just gonna Moon Blast me. Now, had I switched into Zygarde there... I would have gotten my plus two, plus two. He would have been in range of extreme speed, and I would have knocked out the Weavile with a plus two extreme speed after rocks, and I would have also knocked out the Zard from the range it's at. But instead, I decided to stay in, and he goes for Moonblast and knocks me out. Now, the worst part is, I'm expecting him to just Moonblast my Zygarde, so I'm gonna bring it in here. And it turns out that Ethan expected me to EV my Zygarde in a way where it could outspeed Weavile at plus one. I still have not seen this thing's last move, and it turns out that it's Taunt, and I can no longer get up a Dragon Dance, and this is a problem because now he's going to get off a Free Defog. He doesn't go for a Moon Blast on the following turn, ladies and gentlemen. He goes for a Defog because he expected one of my two Mons to be Yachiberry. 
Um, now, in my head, uh, this 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 play does make sense. Yes, it does make sense because if my Thunderous was Yachi Berry and it could live the uh, the Icicle Crash from the Weavile and then outspeed the Zard as rocks are up, then I could knock out the Zard with a potential Focus Blast. So I understand his play. Uh, I probably should have gone for an E Speed there to force him to go for a. Um, to go for a Moonblast on the following turn because uh, the E-Speed wouldn't have knocked him out, uh, whereas, it, as you can see, Thousand Arrows does. So, m probably my better play there was to go for the E-Speed uh, rather than the Thousand Arrows because then he would have hit me with a Moonblast on the following turn, and then the fun starts because plus two E-Speed on Weavile, uh, the min roll, I believe, is 82%. And he's Life Orb. You guys are going to see in a second. He is Life Orb, ladies and gentlemen. So, if I got a little bit more, if I got 90% off, with my um, with my Zygarde onto his Weavile, I could knock it out with an E Speed, with a combination of E Speed and the Life Orb, and then my Thunderous comes in against the Zard, sets up a sub as he potentially roosts, goes for a bulk up, and then just starts walling out the Zard and going for Sky Drops. It would have taken a lot of bulk ups to get there, uh, but I think that uh, after a few, then I would have definitely been able to beat his Zard. Uh, 1v1, so that was a, a huge miscalculation on my part. Now he's just going to go into Weavile. Unfortunately, neither of my mons are Yachi Berry. He is Life Orb. He's going to cleanly take out this Zygarde with an Icicle Crash. And of course, as you know, my Thunderous is not set up yet, so he's going to Icicle Crash that as well. And your Montreal Habsols are going to lose 2-0 after a couple of really dumb turns with a Kabutops. So that was uh, that was completely my fault. That was <laughs> I love his uh, Weavile nickname, not Jose, because it's not shiny. Um, a couple of really stupid misplays, especially against the Raichu. The reason I went for Aqua Gen on the Raichu was because I expected it to um, to be Thunderbolt, and that if he Thunderbolted my um, my Kabutops, that he would knock me out with uh, with that Thunderbolt, and then I would go into Zygarde. If he had HP Ice, he would click it and put me into Weakness Policy. And then I just knocked out the remainder of his team after a Dragon Dance. So that was kind of unfortunate that he did have that strange Raichu set. It was actually Toxic Knockoff on Core, uh, and I can't remember the last move. <coughs> Excuse me. I can't remember the last move for the for the life of me. But that Raichu was actually designed to take on a set of Thunderous. Uh, but once it was gone, Thunderous could have actually put in a lot of work. Uh, but instead, I just kept staying in with Kabutops. So I was just like, let me just keep Aqua Jetting, even though it's not getting me anywhere, which was really, really dumb uh, now looking back at it. Because had I gone into Zygarde on one of his Moon Blasts, my E Speed would have killed at plus two. Uh, as you could see, the um, the Thousand Arrows did quite a bit of damage. If I would have gone into uh, into Zygarde on the second Moon Blast, then my E Speed would have killed. And uh, his Moon Blast, I believe, with my bulk, potentially doesn't do a KO me. So if he goes for uh, for the Moon Blast. And I go for the Sludge Wave on the following turn as he does outspeed me because his uh, his Finny was EV to outspeed my specific Zygarde. Then he um, he gets off uh, quite a bit of damage, but he does put me in weakness policy. And Weavile dies from full, actually, guys, uh, from a plus three E speed. So that would have been GG right there. Uh, but unfortunately, I did not play well with the Kabutops. And this kind of works back into what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. I have not been playing well uh, lately. And this is like the first time that I'm feeling that I'm really not playing well in a long time. The last time I would say was back in June of last year when I first started playing League Format. Uh, I was playing really, really bad. Um, and then somebody reminded me of that. Like they they reminded me, look, you, ha you had a rough patch at some point. You got a lot better. And now I'm facing a lot better players. Like I can't complain. I, the, the people that I've lost to uh, in the last week or last couple of weeks were... Anthony Zazo, Iron Flash Gaming, Redithan, and Jar. And all of them are phenomenal players. Like, I, I would have loved to beat them, but I still think that I can give them a run for their money when I'm on my, my A game. And I have not been on my A game <laughs> the past few weeks, especially against Jar. Like, that was just a crushing defeat. Uh, this one was a lot closer, but this one was just me, like, not thinking in the end game at all. Uh, I just expected him to bring the most basic sets because it was last minute prep and his Raichu completely caught me off guard. Uh, but again, like I said, uh, I, I was kind of reminded that uh, even though you have a rough patch, uh, you're going to bounce back eventually. And I, I know that's what's going to happen with me. It's just I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel right now after these three huge losses in the past couple of weeks that I really, um, 
that I really didn't enjoy for one and uh, they, they didn't do a lot of good for my confidence let me tell you that but I look back at last season of the GPC guys and somebody that is currently undefeated in the GPC and almost went undefeated in the NPL as well this season Iron Flash Gaming again Zazo I destroyed him uh, I wouldn't say destroyed I think I, I played phenomenally uh, against him and I beat him and he was supposed to be one of the best players that had come out of nowhere uh, back then. And he still is. He's, he's, he's one of the best league players of all time. By far, in, in, my, uh, in my opinion, of draft league format. Um, but last season, uh, I met him in week four. He was 0-3, and I beat him, and he didn't make playoffs. Like, he, he did horribly last season. But that does not account for what kind of skill level that guy has. So I look at it and I tell myself, well, if somebody like him can have such a huge rough patch, why am I complaining? I'm going to bounce back from this. I'll be fine. Um, it's just that there's a lot going on right now between power rankings and the GBA. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rant a little bit. Uh, between power rankings and the GBA, uh, the NPL minors and the GPC going on, and March Madness is this coming weekend, and I haven't started prep at all for any of those teams. Uh, I had to go through transaction period. You guys are going to see that video later uh, in this week. Uh, for the GPC, I had to make a bunch of switches uh, on my team to make sure that I was prepped for my last few matchups and going into playoffs that I had a decent matchup against uh, all of my opponents, all of my potential opponents' teams. So I really uh, geared myself up for that, and I think I did a good job of that, but you guys are going to see that again uh, later this week. And uh, yeah, so I, th I think I should be okay. Um, I'm... I'm going to try to bounce back, guys, and I'm going to try to find my motivation again for recording. Uh, I never even finished off the um, the GBA Showcase videos because Dom was supposed to do that with me, and then Dom had a little bit of an accident, and uh, a lot of stuff happened, and uh, he wasn't able to record with me, basically, uh, and I wasn't able to refi find a replacement up until now, but I really want to get those showcases back on track. I really want to uh, start uploading again. This upload is late. Uh, it's my first late upload for the GPC ever, so uh, I'm not too worried about it. I don't think I'm gonna get any penalties of any sort. I think everybody has uploaded at least one late video this season, and uh, I don't think I'm any exception. Uh, is there anybody that wouldn't have uploaded late? Let me try to think. Uh, perhaps Turbo, because Turbo's pretty consistent with those. He's really good at that. Uh, and yeah, I think everybody else has had a late upload, including uh, both admins, including myself and Gareth, that are playing in the season right now. The other admin is Rufus. Uh, we both have late uploads now, and Gareth had a ton. So yeah, he penalized himself so hard. It's insane. He had a he had a five point penalty, I believe. <laughs> it's crazy uh, off of his uh, total po his point total. But yeah, guys, uh, I'm sure you're tired of uh, staring at a Weavile and hearing my voice. So that's gonna wrap it up for this week, guys. Uh, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Make sure to check out uh, all of the players in the GPC uh, in the description down below as well. Uh, Ethan is there. Go check out his channel. Go check out his side of the battle. You guys are gonna enjoy that. Uh, seeing what his uh, his prep was, his plays, why he made them. I'm really interested. I'm gonna definitely watch his side as well. And uh, yeah, make sure to follow the GPC on Twitter. Subscribe to the GPC channel. Both links are in the description once again. Subscribe to me if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.